Hey guys. Hello. So uh, this is my project baggie, and this is from John S underscore A Z from a while back. Actually, the big box of awesome. And we have a LM338T, which is commonly used in power regulators and power supplies, I guess. So that is my next big, big project. Um, but part of it is a bridge rectifier. Part of the whole setup would be a bridge rectifier. And so... I see a bridge rectifier in the bag right there. Yeah, there's a big one. So I thought it would be appropriate if I learned about bridge rectifiers and learned about how they work by making one. Mwah! Ha 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 ha. So we'll take that away. Eddie likes to make everything herself. Well, it's She's fun. crazy that way. It's fun. So we're going to have a little lesson here from our, well, me, on diodes. Um, so if you remember my first lesson on diodes way back when, we talked about the anode, the cathode, P, and N type materials, and this is a drawing of a diode. The stripe represents the cathode, okay, and... That's negative for those of us who are uh, not crazy smart. Well, yeah, so a stripe equals negative, like a minus sign, right, but on the side. So then um, this is the schematic symbol. Um, it's just a triangle with a line next to it. The triangle side is the P uh, type of, or the positive, and the N Eddie likes is to the say line. it's backwards because it does, uh, you know, the arrow points from positive to negative, but through her study she learns that the electrons actually go from the negative, negative pole to, positive. to the positive. So it ticked her off that uh, this arrow points in the wrong direction. Correct. And so I prefer labeling them as P and N, which I did here. Any case, so when you have a battery hooked up to this diode, your power source, um, if you have the positive side linked to the N, um, N side of the diode, you will have no flow. And if likewise negative to the P. But if you have the P of the diode connected to the positive terminal of the battery or your power supply and your N uh, type of the diode connected to the negative terminal of the battery, then you will indeed have charge flow and current will go, ha ha! Unless you're like Addy and you forget to connect the wires here, then probably well, nothing's going to happen regardless of yeah, which way the battery is. Yeah, but I was is. just, I was just demonstrating. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so this is like a DC current, but what we're doing, um, but what bridge rectifiers do is they deal with AC current. They, they make AC current become DC current. So a oscillating frequent uh, current become forward moving like uh, Morse code. So this is an example of what they would look like. It's actually two pairs of diodes in the same orientation, um, diagonal from each other, I guess. You got an AC source here. So yeah. that's push-pulling on this part of the loop. Yeah. And because this diode will only let electrons flow in one direction, when it's pushing, it pushes through. It can't go that way, so it goes that way and then out. Okay. So here I have the um, AC current going in one direction, and here I have it going in the opposite direction to represent the two halves of the AC current. Um, and so here, if we remember that uh, electrons go from the negative pole of a power supply to the positive pole, we're not talking conventional flow, we're talking electron flow here. We'll go ahead and follow this through. And it goes, it follows the one-way street that the diode provides for it. And then it, it uh, gives its voltage, current, what have you, to the load, which in this case is the light bulb. And then it goes through that diode, comes up, and back to the positive terminal of the power supply. And that completes its circuit. But it kind of just goes there, as long as... But because this is an AC current, it does it one way, 
and then it goes the other way. Correct. And it does at 60 times a second. Correct. And so if you were looking in at this... In the United States, anyway. Right. In the UK, it'd be 50. Thank you, Whiskey. Yep. Okay. So if we're looking at this on an oscilloscope, you would see that one cycle of that would be this positive curve. All right. So now, now that the current has gone forward, now it's coming back. So what happens then? Well, these poles reverse, so the negative is up here, or the negative terminal of the power supply. So we'll follow that, and it's going to come this way instead. Follow, follow, follow. It's going to go towards the battery, or towards the load here, which is our uh, light bulb. Then it's going to keep going, and then it's going to get sucked towards the positive pole. Now, if you notice, in both uh, instances, the direction of the electron flow was this way, and the direction of the electron flow was this way towards the load, no matter which direction the AC current itself was going. So, Which and so, we call rectification. Correct. Rectify! Rectify! And so here on the oscilloscope, you would see that it'd be two positive curves instead of that. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, and we're going to demonstrate this, so... Woohoo! Let me introduce you to our cast of characters. Here we have a 1984? Four, I think. Uh -huh. Commodore 64 power supply. We use this because it has a 9-volt uh, AC pair of pins coming off of its uh, DIN connector. Here. And uh, this is not plugged in, so I can poke it with my finger and not get jabbed. <laughs> okay, so that is where our power is coming in. It's uh, uh, AC is coming in here. We have the beautiful breadboard, courtesy of John S.A.Z. Uh, we have a uh, digital multimeter, courtesy of uh, Maker, Dino. Uh, Maker Dino. Thank you, yeah. sir. And we have uh, uh, Tracy Seymour. Yeah, our Tracy Seymour, our uh, private eye. Yep. All right, we are going to use these tools in our DIY bridge rectifier done with four diodes, two pairs of two, to uh, test this little fella here. Okay. Okay, so this is. Uh, Eddie's DIY bridge rectifier test circuit here. Now, no, normally you just uh, use a, a bridge rectifier. Take the camera, please. Okay. Uh, you just use a, a component to do this part. But she actually took individual diodes and built this section here. Yep. And you've got a cap yep. across the outputs. And you've that got helps a, to. That helps we'll, we'll go through that. Oh, okay. um, we've got a current limiting resistor and an LED just so that we can see that it's functioning visually. Okay. Yeah, you could take this off and, you know, whatever, but it's just for demonstration purposes here. Okay. So, uh, let me, right now, our test, we're going to connect. This is the, uh, the negative terminal, the ground terminal from our oscilloscope. I'm connecting that to the uh, negative side of the input of the bridge rectifier here. Okay. And I'm going to put the probe onto the positive side. Any reason? So that we can demonstrate what's going on inside the circuit. Okay. And power supply plugged and light on. Yes. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do here is drop our digital multimeter leads in here okay. and I'm gonna bring this one on to the negative coming in mm -hmm. uh, let me make sure I'm into uh, AC and uh, this one on the positive lead back here okay as you can see there we have 9 volt AC okay mm -hmm. And that's what the power supply is supposed to put out, so we're perfectly good there. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to switch this over to DC, and I'm going to check 
the output right past the bridge rectifier. Positive output is here, negative output is there. And on here, again, it's white and gray, just like on the inputs. So my white is positive, and my gray is negative. So I'm going to tap in there, and there, and you can see on the uh, multimeter that we have 10.56 DC coming out of it. Out of the bridge rectifier? Yeah. So that's DC. And that has to do with um, something like... There's root. actually closer like 12, but we actually yeah. have a load on it right now. I see. And that has to do with root mean square voltages, um, which if I remember correctly, when you have a certain amount of AC going through a bridge rectifier, coming out of that bridge rectifier will be about 1.5 times your AC voltage worth of DC. Very handy information. Yep, and there's actually, it's better explained in our forums, timkers.com slash forum. T-Y-M-K-R-S dot com. Yep. Alright, so uh, this is attached to that negative input, and I am going to drop my probe mm -hmm. onto the positive input so we can see on the scope here, this is the 9 volt AC coming in cool. from that transformer. So that's positive and negative 9 volts? Yeah. Okay. Positive 9, negative 9. Okay. And we dialed it in so that uh, this is 60 cycle. So, you know, this is uh, the 20th of a second. Mm -hmm. And that's like uh, a seventh of a second or something. Okay. Pretty simple. Yep. So this is what is going in to the bridge rectifier. Correct. And now you're going to put the probe after the bridge rectifier? I'm going to unplug it first because I'm not stupid. <laughs> okay, so on the output side of the bridge rectifier I color coded the negative side uh, as gray just uh -huh. as I did on the input. So I'm going to connect this over here to the gray side. I can't quite see it but that's okay. So that's connected to the gray side now, and I am going to plug it back in. Okay. Don't get electrocuted. This is why I'm doing the, uh, the <laughs> wires today, because we're actually plugging it into the wall. Eddie's, uh, she's okay. I'm, I'm okay with her messing with little batteries. I'm not so okay with her plugging stuff into the wall. Just 120 to... volts AC. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to tap into the positive side in here. We're, again, on the after the bridge rectifier, so our negative side ends up being here, okay, and our positive side there, okay. and that's where this probe is going, the positive side, which is our our white line. Okay. All right. So if we take a look at the scope, we can see that the output right out of the bridge rectifier is no longer uh, a big sine wave. If we were to go DC, we can see it's a positive but it's got this ripple to it. Yep. Now, that's due to the fact that Addy's diagram was uh, very kindly showing us here, take a look, that there's bumps as it goes. Yep. And that's what we are seeing here on the scope is the actual bumps that Addy drew. Let me flip it back to AC and I'll divide uh, or I'll multiply on by 10 so we can actually see them in more detail. Kind of looks like so that's, AC, though. So that's the noise coming through. Oh, okay. That's what we call the ripple. I see. And so that's what do why, you do? That's why we added this capacitor here. Okay. So that we could actually smooth the voltage out. Yep. Cause, so uh, if I tap into the circuit uh, with this uh, capacitor, okay. without the LED in the circuit, you're going to see this thing is charging, and as the uh, the uh, wave ramps up and down, it compensates and it keeps the voltage nice and smooth. So now if I multiply the height on that by 10, or even 100, you can't see it at all, because it's just gone. It's like a nice smooth... That's kind of impressive. Yeah. So that takes out all of the noise out of the thing. Cool. And that is uh, at ease. DIY bridge rectifier. Indeed. Rectification is awesome. 
So um, I'm sure Eddie's going to put up some blog posts and whatnot on this, and mm -hmm. uh, probably some cleaner schematics. And if any of you guys are interested uh, in more details on this, just ask questions in the comments. Yep. Now, we had an announcement uh, this week uh, going live. Uh -huh. is a new podcast from us yep. called First Spin. Yep. It's being sponsored by uh, Parallax Inc. Yep. They make the propeller and basic stamp too and robot parts and all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, and the idea behind the podcast is that Addie wants to learn how to program microcontrollers. Yep. But she doesn't know how yet. So she knows absolutely nothing. nothing. Yep. And Roy, Eltham, and myself, uh, Roy being the expert here, me being intermediate, uh, intermediate, are going to be answering her questions so that she has uh, a fresh view from a, a novice point of view uh, and will ask the kinds of questions that anyone who's interested in getting involved in this stuff from the ground up would be asking. Right, because I'm not a programmer talking to programmers. I'm a complete noob talking to programmers and making them explain it in understandable methods. It's going to be a half-hour long show, Yep. and we're going to be doing it once a week. We're not sure how long we're going to be doing it for, but uh, mm -hmm. we're, we've got a, a run of, I think, five that are going to be coming out over the next five weeks. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, as a bonus, put up episode... Zero, the pilot, mm -hmm. which was just sort of our uh, seeing if it would work and how it would go and that sort of thing. And you can find that at firstspin.tv. You got it. Uh, there are RSS feeds and iTunes links on there, uh, so you can subscribe to have it automatically be downloaded to your your iPad, your phone, uh, your iTunes, what, what have you. Mm -hmm. And that'll all automatically happen every time we posted a new episode. Yep, and just let us know what you think about it. So if you've, if you've ever wondered what's up with these propellers and you, you know about other microcontrollers or even if you don't know um, about any of this stuff and you're like maybe I and Arduinos or something like that, the information that you'll get out of this thing will be useful no matter what platform you're getting into, but it will specifically explain why we use the, the heck out of this particular microcontroller. Yep. All right. I think that's it for today. Okay. We, uh, we're, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this extra long, detailed <laughs> episode. Um, it's like uh, 4.30 in the morning, Tuesday morning. We're working away. <laughs> we into the hours of the night, hacking, Always. sharing it with you guys. Always. So uh, I'm actually going to post this early today. And uh, uh, enjoy, and we'll see you guys on Friday. Bye. Bye. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe. And follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.